church and what wonderful servants' hearts they have. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 31, of course, on a Wednesday evening, we do Bible study time. I hope you can follow along and fill out the pieces of paper that you have there. And Sunday, of course, preaching on morning and evening. But let's look at this as we study it tonight on knowing the Holy Spirit. There are many evidences of uh, a person being filled uh, with the Spirit of God. We taught about how to be anointed with the Spirit of God in one of the lessons, so I'll not rehearse that with you. Uh, but we're going to look at some evidences tonight. Acts chapter 4, verse 31, where the Bible says, as I read it for reiteration's sake, the Bible says, and when they had prayed, the Bible says, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were filled. The Bible talks about all filled, so every one of them uh, with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. The Bible talks about how we are commanded to be filled with the Spirit of God. It's not something that you should consider to say, well, maybe it's for me. Oh, if you're a child of God, you're a believer, that is, it is for you. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. Here's the command, but be filled with the Spirit. And so God uh, wants each one of us to be filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, there's three marks of a Spirit-filled believer that we'll talk about tonight. Uh, think about this, if you will. Uh, it takes thought, it takes intent, it takes study, it takes meditation, if you will, uh, to become a growing Christian. Uh, a growing Christian is not somebody that accidentally grows. It's not that way. Uh, you and I are saved the same way. Salvation is uh, by grace through faith. So we're all saved the same way by, if you will, the same person. And we begin uh, our lives, the Christian lives that is, the same way. We all begin as babes in Christ. But yet the Bible uh, exhorts us to grow. You'll see it many places in the scriptures, how God says that we were supposed to grow. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, but grow uh, in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord uh, and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be uh, glory both now and forever. Amen. So God tells us to grow. Uh, we're not supposed to stay the same. Uh, how pitiful it is for a person that is saved only but they never grow like they should. However, it's true. Some Christians grow and some Christians do not. And so there's two different types of Christians that you see mentioned in your Bible. One is the Christian that practices carnality. The other one is a Christian that practices spirituality. Uh, the carnal Christian is saved, but they still walk uh, in the flesh. They don't walk in the spirit. Uh, the cardinal person, if you will, please, cannot receive strong meat. Uh, and so the Bible talks to, to them as babes in Christ. They still need the simple food, if you will. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but unto Cardinal. It says, even as unto babes in Christ. And so he compares carnality to that which is a babe in Christ. Uh, they cannot handle strong meat. The spiritual man, however, can. The spiritual man can not only just be able to handle strong meat, but he can digest it. He can understand it. He can comprehend it. He can be able to serve God with it. Uh, and so the, 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 the person practicing carnality and the person practicing spirituality. Now, let's look at this, if you will, as I give you a little bit of comparison in your notes. Uh, the person practicing carnality has a, a mind that practices carnality. And you can look these verses up. I just put them there for reference for sake of time. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 7. Then you see the, uh, the carnality is limited. It limits you in your faith and the fullness thereof. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 1. Uh, carnality uh, is something that a weak 
Christian has. 1 Corinthians 3 and 2. Uh, carnality uh, bounds us. It enslaves us, if you will, going along with the same uh, teaching that it limits us. Romans 7 and 14. Carnality uh, opposes us. Uh, it is our opposition for becoming a spiritual person. Romans chapter 8 and 7. Uh, carnality is doomed. By the way, how is it doomed? Uh, many people, because of the fact that they practice fleshly things, uh, they lose the blessing of uh, God uh, blessing their life, uh, whereby you see that their spirit is different. You see that the countenance is different. You see that their, their vigor and their energy for Christ is different, Galatians 6 and 8. Then carnality, of course, is something that is despised, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 3 and 4. But then here's the spiritual person. A spiritual person. Spirituality is born. Uh, how is it born? Well, you become born again, uh, John 3 and 6, and then spirituality is led. Uh, a spiritual person wants to be led of God, wants to be led of God, wants to be led of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 and 12. Uh, a spiritual person, a spiritual minded person, if you will, uh, uh, they are minded of the things that are spiritual. They really want to try. You know, that, that's not saying that they're going to obtain. That's not saying that they're going to perfect. That's not saying that they're going to be um, a spiritual giant. But at least they're trying. At least they're trying. And, uh, and you'll find that, of course, uh, in Romans 8, uh, 5, and 6. Uh, a spiritual person, uh, they are renewed. How are they renewed? Well, because they're in the Bible. Uh, somebody that practices carnality, if you check them out, and you check them out very closely, you'll find out more often than not that they don't spend time in the Word of God. Oh, they're making haste about doing this and doing that, but they don't have a personal walk with God. Well, and that's how it comes sometimes when the preacher gives it's up and the preacher preaches a message that is just slightly strong they're easily offended uh, but uh, that person that is a spiritual person uh, they're renewed daily why because of their walk with God Ephesians 4 2 and 3 uh, they're sealed and they're happy about that by the way uh, Ephesians 4 and 13 they're filled Ephesians 5 and 18 and they are freed uh, Romans uh, 8 and 2 and so we know this we know there's there's uh, uh, three people groups that you'll see in the Bible. Uh, there's the natural man. Uh, he's not saved. Natural man. Uh, then there's the person that gets saved. Uh, they get saved. But now, wait a minute. Did you know it takes a long time for God to get the fleshliness uh, out of us so we understand we're supposed to be submissive to the Holy Spirit's living uh, through us? It takes a long time. Uh, you know, uh, Brother Roloff said it only took a, 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 just a fraction of a, a Christ is Savior and a Savior from hell, but it takes a long time to get you to go the right direction in practicing heavenly things, all right? And so then there's the spiritual man. Who is that? He's yielded to the Lord. He seeks the Lord in the things that he does. So the natural man, not saved, uh, uh, but he gets saved, and he, he don't enter necessarily into practicing spirituality. I remember when I got saved, I still had, oh, very many a worldly type of things that I would do. Why? Because I'm not yet grown as a Christian. I'm not yet grown as a Christian. Uh, but when I received Christ as my Savior, uh, since I was born into the family of God, I really wanted to please my Heavenly Father. And in pleasing my Heavenly Father, when uh, I see, uh, saw stuff in the Scriptures, when the preacher preached stuff out of the Bible, when I went to a Bible study and I was taught things from the Word of God, there was a, a hunger and a thirst to be able to uh, be able to please the Lord. And so then there's that spiritual person. Well, they do. Uh, that's a person that's yielded to the Holy Spirit. Oh, you're going to find this out. You're you're going to find this out, that a person that's yielded to the Holy Spirit, uh, they don't want the flesh to control them. They don't want, uh, if somebody tempts them to smoke and drink and dope, they're going to not just walk away from it, they're going to flee from it. They're going to make haste to get away from it. They don't want it to mess up their relationship that they have with God uh, himself, all right? And so uh, there's three markings that I'll give you tonight about a spiritual Christian. Statement number one, first mark would be this, a deep appreciation for the person 
uh, of uh, our Lord Jesus. A deep appreciation. You know, you just never get over the fact that you got saved. You never get over the fact that you're born again. You never get over the fact that you're going to heaven. You never get over the fact that uh, uh, you have brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. Now, this means this. Uh, this means know Christ as your Savior. Uh, know Christ as your Savior. It's not a hope so. It's not a maybe so. It's not a might so. It's not a guess so. It's a no so salvation. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, the Bible says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day and so we know that we're saved it's not a hope so not a maybe so not a might so well maybe i'll go to heaven oh no friend you ought to know for sure you're going to go to heaven because you have received jesus christ as savior so here's the question tonight have you been born again by the way uh, being born again is not a perpetual state of being it's a one-time birthing experience into the family of god that's why our Bible does not say you must be born again and again and again and again and again. It's not a perpetuation. It is a one-time birth into the family of God. All right? So are you fully satisfied in your own heart that you truly have been saved? Now, I said this. The first mark is a deep appreciation of the person of our Lord Jesus. Now, that means this, that you know Christ as your Savior. Secondly, uh, we must study Christ. Study Christ. Now, if, uh, if you've been saved, you want to please him, right? If you want to please him, you have to study him. Uh, how can I please him unless I know who he is? Unless I know how to walk with him and uh, know how to obey him. So study him. How did he walk among men? Uh, what was his uh, conversation and his deeds? Study him. Uh, what type of compassion did he have? Uh, study him. What type of attitude did he have with sinners? Uh, what type, if you would please, of uh, stance did he take for his heavenly father? All right, statement number next. Uh, we must seek to be like him. Seek to be like him. Now, by the way, when you deeply appreciate someone, you want to hang around them. You, you like the fact that they can have a portion of your life, time-wise, and influence into your life. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21, the Bible says, For even unto it says, Were ye called, because Christ also suffered uh, for us, leaving us an example that we should follow, listen to it now, his steps. Oh, I think I ought to follow this such and such a Christian because I think that they're a good Christian, and that might be good for a little while. But you always ought to make sure that it's the steps of Christ. Man will let you down. Man will let you down. I've seen parents that let their own children down. I've seen uncles and aunts that have let their own uh, cousins and nephews down, uh, or nephews and nieces down. I've, I've seen so many people that uh, begin to walk, and then they stop the walk, and because they stop the walk, somebody trips over them. Now, and so, we must seek to be like him. Uh, study him, I said, uh, so that you can seek to be like him in his love and appreciation. Uh, in uh, uh, the desire to work in a marvelous way in people's lives. You know, I studied recently the revival uh, that did take place in Wales and uh, in, in the country of Wales. And, of course, uh, I've got in my notes right here uh, about this little girl. She was 15 years of age. She was going to a prayer meeting. And uh, she was just, I mean, just overflowing about what God meant to her. I, I mean, nobody else might have been overflowing, but she was overflowing. I mean, she was just beside herself about what God meant to her. And uh, so there was a time of silence, and, uh, and she's a very shy person, but somehow she just couldn't hold it in. And so she spoke up, and she said this with a cry, uh, uh, tears coming down her cheek. She said, uh, oh, she said, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And she repeated it several times. Oh, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Small, uh, rural church gathering. She's speaking up in the midst of those gathering in that small church rural setting. And she said, oh, I love 
the Lord Jesus Christ. The deacon was leading the music that night. He didn't know what to do. He's standing there. He decides, well, I'm going to try and lead the last uh, uh, part of the hymn. Uh, but uh, she said it one more time. Oh, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And then all of a sudden, uh, over to the uh, right of her was somebody that just broke out in tears and said, oh, I do too. And then somebody else broke out in tears. And before you know it, there was a testimonial service going on. And they forgot what time it was. And all they started testifying and weeping into the early morning hours and started praying that God would reveal himself to them and started yielding themselves to God. Oh, like a tornado, the a Holy Spirit of God swept into the land. And because of that little prayer meeting that night, all of Wales was set afire. Why? A 15-year-old girl, uh, because she stood and she testified, uh, because she stood and she testified over and over again, and she wanted everybody to know, everybody to know how much she loved the Lord her God. And uh, drunkards uh, out of that great revival got saved and gamblers and thieves and infidels got saved and people paid off their debts and people confessed their wrongs and got right with other brothers and sisters in Christ. The first week of the revival, there was over 20 thousand people that was saved in Wales. Where did it start? It started in a little country church out in a rural setting where a little girl, 15 years of age, stood and she said, oh, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And she repeated it over and over and over again until the people had finally sunk in. Uh, you can imagine how God uh, could use something like that. There needs to be a deep appreciation for the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Statement number two Two, uh, evidence of a spirit-filled life is this, a hunger for the Word of God, a hunger for the Word of God. The psalmist said this, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, Psalm 119 is devoted to that which is the matter of the Word of God. Psalm 119 verse 24, the Bible talks about thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Uh, in verse 40 of that same uh, psalm, it says, Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Uh, psalm 64, or, uh, rather, verse 64 in that same psalm, 119 says, uh, The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Uh, teach me thy statues. All right? And so there needs to be an appreciation for that which is our Lord Jesus Christ. But don't stop there. There needs to be a deep appreciation, if you will, please, for uh, that which is the Word of God. There needs to be a hunger uh, for uh, the Word of God. Here's what we see, that uh, it leads first to a hunger to study the Word of God. Hunger to study the Word of God. Now, notice our verse, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. The Bible said, blessed are they uh, which hunger, watch this, watch it carefully, blessed are they uh, which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled, filled. Filled. Uh, God uh, can fill you uh, with his goodness and fill you with his spirit if you hunger and thirst after righteousness. Somebody said to me the other day, they said, now preacher, I don't understand. Uh, I, I just don't understand it. It just doesn't seem like I can serve God enough. I'm so discouraged. Uh, you know, I want to serve God more, but I just feel like I'm limited. And I just want to serve God more, but it just feels like I'm limited. I want to give him more, but it just feels like I'm limited by time, by space, by finances. I just can't give God, and I feel so back Slidden. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, you're misinterpreting how God works for you and in you. Notice that verse again, and it gives clarity. The Bible says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. When you're hungry and you're thirsty, that means you're healthy. When you're hungry and you're thirsty. Look, uh, the day that you're satisfied by all that you do in serving Christ is the day that you stop growing. Hungry people, thirsty people are healthy people. Now notice what they're hungry and thirsty after. They're, you, okay, watch this. They're hungry and thirsty after righteousness. They want to be in a place where there's righteousness. What is that? That's right living. That's right doing. They hunger and thirst for things to be right. They hunger and thirst for righteous activity. 
Oh, uh, that means they hunger and they thirst uh, to be around righteous people. They want righteous preaching. Uh, that means they hunger and thirst after church. You show me somebody that's not hungry and thirsty after church, and I'll show you somebody that's on the trail to being a backslider. Somebody says, well, I just don't like church. Well, then you've got a heart that needs revival. Because everybody ought to like church. Uh, you ought to like being here. Oh, you say, but I just don't like it just because. Uh, there's somebody in the church that annoys me. All right, then go get right with them, and they won't annoy you no more. Uh, nobody ought to come between you and your Savior. If somebody comes between you and your Savior, it's not the Savior's fault. It's not the preacher's fault. It's your sorry fault. Now, here's what we understand. The Bible says this. The Bible says that this leads to a hunger uh, to study the Word of God. You're hungering after knowing it, uh, studying it, if you will. So study it daily. Study it systematically. Uh, uh, study it prayerfully. Secondly, we see this, that it means obedience to what you learn, it says, from uh, His Word. You're obedient. There's obedience. You say, where do you get that at? Well, the Bible uh, John chapter 13, verse 17, the Bible says, if you know these things, now by the way, that's conditional. You ever see somebody get a speeding ticket? And they say this, they say, I did not know it, I was supposed to go that slow. I did not know. Now, they may be honest about it. Some of you that are smiling probably were not honest about it. But here's what it says. It says, uh, if, now by the way, that's a condition, condition. If, if, he says, if you know these things, happy are ye, watch what it says, if you do them. Amen. Here's what I find out, serving Christians are happy people, Amen. they're happy. Oh, it might be picking up chairs and putting them away after a fellowship, but they're happy. It might be you're part of the janitorial, or, or custodial rather, the custodial crew that comes in and helps, and you volunteer to clean the church and clean the bathrooms, but you are happy. Amen. See, uh, when, the way to find your happiness is to do what God has showed you to do. I know many people that have been showed by th shown things by God that do not do things for God. Oh, and they're cantankerous. All right, now I'm saying this. Uh, it means this. Secondly, it means obedience to what you learn from his word. Thirdly, it means uh, consistency, consistency uh, in church attendance for personal growth. Consistency. Now, sometimes people get ill. We understand. Sometimes people have to work. We understand. But don't, uh, don't neglect understanding what the Bible teaches. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, the Bible says, so then uh, faith cometh by, talk to me, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, all right? And so the more you hear the word of God, the more God will use the word of God as a tool to build your faith. That's why church is important. Oh, but you say, but preacher, I don't always get everything out of church that I feel like I ought to. It doesn't matter. You might not see your vitamins work overnight, but after a while, by and by, they might help. Eating a decent meal that's full of protein and things that, uh, that are healthy, uh, and by and by, it might help. I didn't say Whataburger. I said things that are healthy. All right, now I know where Kenny's mind goes. Uh, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right, statement number three, we're talking about uh, evidence of uh, a spirit-filled life, a burning uh, passion for souls, a burning passion for souls. Uh, Psalm 126, 5 and 6, the Bible says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, uh, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bring his sheaves with him. All right, so there's a burning passion for souls you want to see people saved why in the world would you not want to see people saved why in the world would you not want to see somebody go to heaven why in the world would you not want to give somebody a gospel track why in the world 
You want everybody to be saved, don't you? All right, uh, you see this. Uh, first, uh, there must be a, a conscious appreciation of your own salvation. Uh, people that don't appreciate what they have will not tell others about it. The more that you learn to appreciate that you're saved, the more excited you get about telling others about Jesus Christ. First uh, Peter chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, uh, Whom having not seen, ye love, listen to it now very carefully, in whom it says, uh, though uh, now you see him not yet believing, uh, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, what's that talking about? You appreciate the fact that you're saved. First uh, Peter 1 and 9, the Bible says this, uh, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So uh, when, when you receive the end of your faith, in other words, you come to the understanding, I am saved. Once you come to the understanding, I am saved, then what takes place is it brings joy to your souls, fulfillment to your souls. Oh, preacher, I've had a bad day, but are you saved? Well, somebody tried to run me off the road. Are you saved? Hello, went to the grocery store and somebody cheated me. Are you saved? Don't let stuff let or temporal things ruin your day. If you're saved, it's settled, and so you can have a good day no matter what comes your way. Statement number next. Secondly, you see uh, people as they are. You see people, uh, they're saved or they're lost. You see them that way. Everybody has a soul. It's going to spend eternity somewhere, and you see them that way. Thirdly, uh, you let there be a burning desire to share Christ with others. A burning desire to share Christ with others. John uh, 3 and 18, the Bible says this, uh, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Now why? Because he hath not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. That is one of my daddy's favorite verses. My daddy was doubting his salvation, and some of you have been soul winning with me, and you'll know how I give assurance of salvation, and I'll use that three by five card, and I'll draw things out, and I'll write uh, scripture references down there as I talk to somebody about e the eternal security of the believer. Now, can I tell you, I did that with my own daddy. But the reason I did that is because daddy, uh, when he received Christ as Savior, uh, he needed the assurance of the Bible, and I've never seen a believer that doesn't. And so once you're saved, you're always saved. So there's three markings of that which is a spirit-filled person. Oh, back in the day of uh, the Philadelphia uh, citywide revivals, uh, they decided that they wanted an evangelist to come and to preach this citywide revival. Different names was drawn, and uh, one of the preachers there uh, said, well, what about D.L. Moody? And another one spoke up and said, do you think that Mr. Moody has a monopoly on the Holy Ghost? Another preacher spoke up and said, no, sincerely, I do not believe that. But I do believe that the Holy Spirit has a monopoly on D.L. Moody. Now, I think that's the way it ought to be in our lives. If somebody's looking at you and they only see you, then you're probably not as good of a Christian as you ought to be. But if somebody's looking at you and they see Christ through you, then I think now you've done a better job. And may it be tonight that we allow Christ to be seen through us. A little girl, she had a burden for her parents to get saved. True story. She was there in the Hattiesburg, Mississippi area many years ago when Dr. C.R. Williams was the pastor of the Central Baptist Church where I was an assistant pastor and youth director for eight years. Oh, this little girl. She had such a burden for mom and daddy to get saved. And one day, uh, daddy said, you know the reason? You know the reason I'm not saved? He said, you know the reason I'm not saved? Because I don't believe you're a Christian. Look at the way you're walking, and look at the way you're dressing, and look at the way you're acting, and look at the way you're talking. If that is true, true Christianity, I want nothing to do with it, because it's no different than anybody else I've ever seen. Oh, she was saved, though. But she took that to heart. She really did. And she began to be a very devoted believer, a very devoted Christian. 
And uh, she decided that I'm going to let Christ shine through me. I don't want my parents to die and go to hell because of me. She cried and she wept and she fasted for her parents to get saved. And her mom was the very first one that uh, she led to Christ. Dad later on got saved uh, because uh, he came back and he said, I don't know what's changed in your life. And she said, I decided to be a dedicated believer. That's why. And Daddy, I'm so sorry that I wasn't dedicated before. See, it's all about choices, isn't it? It's all about us making choices about what type of believer we're going to be. But let's be the type that we're stepping stones for people to come to Christ rather than stumbling blocks for people to stumble over on their way to a devil's hell. Father, bless we do pray tonight. Help us, Father, uh, to be those that give 